You're watching GM6 Drone Mapping. In this video, we're going to take a look at a 3D model that was processed in both Pix4D and Agisoft Metashape. Now, if you want to learn more about drone mapping, then head over to gm6.io. Our online drone mapping course is the fastest way to get you up in the air and mapping. Now, before we get started today, a few things to keep in mind. Normally, when you create a 3D model, you don't put the images into the software and just use the default settings and go all the way through and not have to do some sort of work on the project in between the steps. Sometimes it's cleaning the point cloud, sometimes it's cleaning the mesh, refining the mesh. In this situation, that's exactly what I did. I left each program at their default settings so that we could take a look at everything, making it as even as possible. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start out in PIX4D. Uh, we'll look at this 3D model first. So this is not a new feature, but I wanna point this out because it's worth noting that the fact that you can draw a boundary around your project before you start makes a huge difference when it comes to some 3D models. And the reason for this is because if you've processed large 3D models, then you know the points from the point cloud can get spread out uh, over a huge amount of area, which would technically be, you know, a couple of miles maybe if uh, you wanted to look at it in scale. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is we'll go into the ray cloud. All right, so this is the 3D model, the uh, sparse point cloud, and as you can see, uh, that bounding box or that line cleaned or cut this off clean so that you didn't have points spread out all over the place. And so here's the uh, dense point cloud, and it looks pretty good. I'm not sure exactly what this is. Uh, normally I would say that it picked up points from the sky, but none of my images had the sky in it. So it most likely is just noise from the uh, thin metal pieces here. I'll turn on the uh, mesh next. So now this is the part that really differentiates, I think, uh, Agisoft and Pix4D, is that the mesh, when when it's been generated, you uh, you can't cut it, clip it, trim it, any of that. You just, you're stuck with mesh. Now you can go back and trim the point cloud and then regenerate mesh, but what you have is what you have. So um, that's kind of what you would be stuck with unless you go in there and really clean up. Let me turn this off. So here's what it looks like with uh, without any of the points. You can tell that it is a tower, but you can't give it to your client uh, in this in this form because, well, it just looks bad. So you can see that any of the mesh that came out thick and kind of uh, bulging out, it's not uh, just pieces of uh, point cloud that are in here that you can clean out. In this case, it's actually uh, integrated into the metal. So the only thing that I know of to do in this case would be to make the points in the point cloud smaller so that when it generated the mesh it wouldn't be as uh, bulky but it's it's still going to be too big because in this case the mesh was still not even close to being formed around the point cloud. Alright so now let's look at the size of the final output file. Look at the uh, 3D mesh. If you notice, there's an FBX file and an OBJ file. These are both your 3D models. So by default, Pix4D will generate a second 3D model file. 
that you can turn that off, but by default, it's automatically going to be generated. And that takes up a little more time as well, I'm sure. But for this comparison, I just want to look at the OBJ file. So this is 70 megabytes for the OBJ, and the texture, which you have to have, is 18. You've got roughly 90 megabytes for a 3D model. It's really not bad. It's very easy to work with. You can give that to a client and it's not going to overwhelm their system. So no big deal. However, you can't give them this, I don't think. So next, let's look at Agisoft. In this case, we have the 3D model. This has got the mesh on it because when it produces the mesh, it shows in that form. So here's the sparse point cloud. And as you can see, it's not real pretty. It's not clean looking. However, when the mesh is generated and the texture is added, then it looks a lot better. Now, by default, it's not perfect. It's got some breaks in the metal up here, but this is completely usable. And I think uh, if you were in a hurry and you had to deliver the final product to a client without having the ability to go through it thoroughly and make sure that everything's uh, perfect and they were okay with this, then you know you would have a good product to deliver just simply by running it at default. And that's assuming that you take all of your images in a correct way that allows for your model to be put together like this. Uh, one of the things that I like about Agisoft is that it's created this 3D model, but it doesn't create any types of output files until I need it. So in this case, I can, I can come over here and I can click on my 3D model. I can say export model. It'll generate that file and then I can export it. And I have, as you can see, about a dozen different file types to choose from. So I went ahead and exported my uh, OBJ file. All right, so this is 52 megabytes. And to see the texture file, I'll have to open up. So here we go. All right, so the texture file is six megabytes. So total, we have a 58 megabyte file compared to the uh, 90 megabytes so it's a little smaller and uh, in my opinion uh, better looking but you you can decide on your own what you think all right so now I want to take a look at the times and again to get your report out of Agisoft you have to export it and it'll generate the report so it doesn't generate it on its own which is no big deal because it just takes uh, couple seconds to generate. Of course, I've already got mine here. So I'll take the times from this one and I'll take the times from PIX4D's report and then we'll add these up. There's your comparison of the uh, 3D models. I uh, hope you found that helpful. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you're not already. And don't forget to check us out at gm6.io.